Hey everybody, John Deere here. Today I'm going to do a little featured segment on how to hoop a finish cap properly. If you have a multi-needle machine, you probably have the option of adding a hoop accessory onto the machine so that you can actually sew on finish hats. Now if you do get this accessory for your machine, it'll always consist of a driver which you attach to the actual machine and it will actually fit right over top of the arm that comes out which allows you to actually sew on tubular items. Now you also have your cap frame and the frame is what you attach your hat to and you can see that this is a curved surface as well and then you have your jig which you actually use to attach your uh, hat frame to the jig and it helps you to hoop a little bit better as well. So once we finish this, I'm going to show you how to hoop a hat properly because that's the number one thing that I've seen online when I've had people, you know, basically question why did this not work properly and I saw the hoop in the hat before they put it on the machine and I could tell that it was going to have disastrous results just because of the way it was hooped. Now before we get started, I'm going to go over a few of the basic styles of hats that are out there. And if you've looked online, I'm sure you've found that there's hundreds of different cap manufacturers and different styles available, but they generally fall into three main categories. Number one is the OPFs, or the one-piece front hats, and those are kind of the old farmer style hats. They have a tendency to have the material with the foam and laminated backing, and they have the mesh backs, and they're usually pretty easy to actually hoop and embroider because you're not dealing with center seams and you also have the structure of the uh, laminated backing that helps you when you're embroidering. Another style is actually the varsity or collegiate style hats and those tend to fit a little closer to the head but they do not have any uh, you know, structure or laminated backing on the front of the panels so they do have a tendency to move a little bit and you have to really make sure that they are hooped properly. And then there's probably the most popular hat which is this style right here. It actually is the center seam hat and this is the Bermuda Triangle of Embroidery. You generally lose things inside of that center seam. They are structured and they do have the laminated buckram on the back and this is usually the hat that most people are embroidering these days so this is the one that we're going to hoop today. Now there's one more thing I want you to consider before we start hooping this hat and that is that a hat needs to be hooped properly to run successfully on the machine but equally or more important the design that's going on the hat has to be digitized specifically knowing that you're going to be sewing on a uh, curved surface. You have to remember that a hat consists of a peak and a crown and where this peak and crown meet we have a straight line that goes across the bottom. If your embroidery design have any tag lines, any straight lines across the bottom of the actual design, you need to make sure that you always start your design moving from the bottom and going up. Because if you do a large piece of embroidery in the center first and then you do the tag line, that embroidery may have shifted the frame ever so slightly and then your embroidery is going to actually come out and it's going to be one way or the other on the tag line and it will not look like it's straight. The other thing that you have to make sure that you do when you digitize a design for a finished hat is you want to also follow the inside out rule. You always want to start towards the center seam of your cap and move from the inside out in both directions. If you follow those two rules, bottom up and inside out, your designs will work much better as well. Now one of the most important things to remember is that when you are actually hooping a hat, you want to make sure that your center seam is as close to the uh, center of the cap frame as possible and on all of our cap frames there is usually marks and they've indicated it here with red lines and there's also a red dot on this part of the, the uh, actual frame that comes forward to line up the center seam. Now when you're dealing with a single needle, a single head machine, you don't necessarily have to worry as much because when I actually put that cap frame on the driver 
and load in my design, I can actually make sure that my needle position is dropped right down to the center seam and I can move it to the right or left a little bit. But if you're actually embroidering on a multi-head machine, then it's a totally different story. Now, keep in mind that I'm, I'm kind of good at knowing how to hoop hats for one reason. We did actually have 136 multi-heads running in a factory back in the 80s and 90s. And we had 18 head machines that ran finished hats. So we would literally hoop 18 hats all at the same time, have to press the start button. Now, here's the thing. We had to make sure that on all 18 heads, that center seam was perfect on every single hat. Because you might line up one of the hats to a needle, but then all the rest have to actually work well. So if you do have a multi-head machine, I do suggest that on your actual uh, cap jig, you might want to invest in uh, some lasers, crosshair lasers. We actually had them rigged up on our actual jigs so that when I hoop my hat, I could always tell if I was centered to the actual seam and that way I would get consistent hooping every single time. Now here's another little trick that we used to do, especially if you're dealing with hats that are constructed like this with the laminated backing. Now when we actually did production, we had garment steamers. The actually have the garment steamer with the handle and those garment steamers are not very expensive on Amazon I've seen them for anywhere from 50 to 200 dollars depending on what kind of steamer you want to get but we used to actually use those garment steamers to get hoop burn out of our shirts but what we did at our cap hooping stations was I would always take my hat and the one that was being hooped I'd be hooping but the hat that was next in line I would actually put it up on the head of the garment steamer. The steam running through the hat would soften the laminated backing so that when I took that hat off of the head of the steamer and I actually would start to put it on there and try to get it to mold perfectly, it was a lot more pliable working it with that way. Now we're ready to hoop our hat. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my cap frame is properly engaged into the jig. And you'll actually feel it click in place and it won't move at all. Now I'm gonna take the uh, peak mount and I'm gonna move it out of the way and I'm gonna take the band that holds the uh, crown to the peak and move that out of the way as well. Now when I take my hat, I want to make sure that I turn it over and I actually take the band on the inside and I'm going to move it out of the way because this band is actually going to fall right underneath of this metal plate and I'm going to try to line up that red line to the actual uh, center seam of the hat. So I'm going to take this now while the band is pulled forward and I'm going to very very carefully slide it underneath so that it slides down and that way it's right in place. Try to keep the center seam in place and then I'm going to take that locking band, put it on the actual hat and make sure that I try to secure it so that I have that little metal piece it actually has little teeth on it and I'll make sure that it's structured in there so it stays as tight as possible and I'm going to make sure it's in place and then I'm going to give it a little bit of pressure and click it down and that's clicked in place and if you look that metal piece actually is perfectly in place where the peak meets the crown. There's no player space in there. This way that tag line which is going to go first is going to be perfect and we won't have any misregistration. Now for the uh, peak attachment here I want to make sure that I have this engaged because right now the front peak might actually hit the back of the machine and cause movement and usually when I put this down I have to pull down on the peak I do like to use a little piece of material and I'll put this down over top and that way when I do pull down and then I engage the peak in place I know it's not going to mark up the peak as much. If I don't have something there to stop that it's actually going to mark the peak and it's really hard to get rid of those marks afterwards. So now my hat is actually 
in the actual frame. It's secured. I have it perfectly placed so that that metal band is right in that seam where the peak meets the crown. And I know this is actually going to sew a lot better. Thanks for watching and now you know how to successfully hoop a finished hat so you'll get perfect results every single time. You want to make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of our weekly videos. And if you'd like to try some software that automatically generates lettering from the inside out perfectly for finished hats, make sure you go to our Digitizing Made Easy site and download a free 30-day trial of Hatch. You'll be amazed at the results. Hi everyone, John Deere here and thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with all of your friends. Also, to become part of the legacy, be sure to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified every time we release a new weekly video. So join the legacy now. It's no mystery, award-winning embroidery is our history.